Hi, welcome to Sabbath School Daily, where we have been studying from this lesson right here, Psalms. This week, we're studying from the first lesson of this quarter, which has the title, How to Read the Psalms. And today is Thursday's lesson, which has the title, The World of the Psalms. A while back, as I was giving a Bible study to a young teenager, we came to the end of one of our Bible studies, and I don't really remember which one it was. I believe we were talking about prayer and we were talking about how God wants to lead in our life. And she asked this question that kind of caught me off guard. The question was basically, does God have to be involved in everything in my life? I mean, does everything have to be about God? I believe that the Holy Spirit was working in her heart and revealing to her at that point in our studies that he is not a God of half measures. You can't go halfway with God. It's either him in your life or him not in your life. There is no more or less. And so she was bewildered and wondering, well, will I have to submit everything in my life to God? Is there a part in my life where I can keep to myself? And the answer is naturally no. That is made very clear in the Bible, where you see that the heroes of the Bible, the people who do open their hearts to God and allow him to lead in their life, their whole world revolves around him. And that is precisely what today's lesson is all about. There are several verses that are mentioned at the beginning of today's lesson that make that reality extremely clear that God is a holistic God. He wants to be in our entire, in the whole of our life. He wants to be involved from the greatest decisions, from the biggest things to the biggest circumstances to the smallest, most minuscule and nuanced details of life. The Lord is involved in everything. If you have a really good friend, or better yet, if you're married and have a family, you know that your family members, they are very close to everything that you do. Your spouse, for example, is meant to be part of your walk, part of your journey. Here at home, there is nothing that I do, there is nothing that my wife does that we don't share with each other, that we don't talk about, that we don't discuss with each other, that we don't seek counsel with each other about. That is what this life together means. With the Lord, friends, it's even more so. He is part of everything. I know that I can't survive. I truly cannot thrive without the Lord in my life. I don't know where I would be without him, but I know that it wouldn't be anywhere good. It wouldn't be anywhere happy. And again, that's what this lesson is talking about. The Lord is completely through and through a part of the life of these psalmists. Look at what the first paragraph says. The world of the Psalms is wholly God-centered. It seeks to submit in prayer and praise all life experiences to God. God is the sovereign creator, the king and the judge of all earth. He provides all things for his children. Therefore, he is to be trusted at all times. Even the enemies of God's people ask, where is your God? When God's people seem to be failing, just as the Lord is the ever present and never failing God of his people, so God's people have God always before them. Ultimately, the Psalms envision the time when all peoples and the entire creation will worship God. So here you see that he is part of all of it. He is the totality of the experience, the very core and center of the life of these people. The lesson goes on to say that the centrality of God in life produces the centrality of worship. The worship in which the Psalms lived was fundamentally different from worship as understood by many people today, because worship in the biblical culture was the natural and undisputed center of the entire community's life. Therefore, everything that happened, both good and the bad, in the life of God's people inevitably was expressed in worship. God hears the psalmist wherever he may be and responds to him in his perfect time. I feel that our understanding of worship in the modern world today is extremely limited. To many people, worship is something that they do only in the morning when they leave home or when they arrive home at night. Perhaps it's not even one of those things. To many people, it's just singing one song, perhaps reading a verse and praying. That's not worship, friends. Sure, it's part of it. And sure, it is part of your devotional life. But worship is something that we do at all moments of life, at all moments of the day, day in, day out. Worship is something that accompanies you because it's a lifestyle. It's a relational expression of the most important person in our life. And so that can never truly go away. That can never be something that we set apart or something that we include in some areas of life and exclude in others. God is interwoven into everything that happens in the life of his children. I really cannot overstate that. That's why reading the verses in today's lesson is so important because you're going to see how that reality is applied in the life of these psalmists. And be sure that if you look at other places in the Bible, the heroes of the Bible, the apostles, the disciples, the patriarchs, the prophets, you'll see that in the lives of all these people, God was central. Everything revolved around him. 
I really like what the last paragraph says when it says that the psalmist is aware that God's dwelling place is in heaven, but at the same time, God dwells in Zion, in the sanctuary among his people. God is at the same time far and near, everywhere, and in his temple, hidden and disclosed. In the Psalms, these apparently mutually exclusive characteristics of God are brought together. The psalmist understood the proximity and remoteness were inseparable within the true being of God. The psalmists understood the dynamics of this spiritual tension. Their awareness of God's goodness and presence amid whatever they were experiencing is what strengthens their hope while they wait for God to intervene, however and whenever he chooses to do so. The secret here is that when we do include the Lord in all areas of life, we are never alone to go through the highs and the lows. That means that when you're going through moments of depression, moments of sadness, moments of pure horror, moments of loss where perhaps you just lost someone dear to you, someone special to you, moments perhaps where you were made aware of a very unfavorable prognosis. These moments can either be traversed alone or with the Lord. And I promise you, with him by your side, although the world may be breaking and being torn asunder around you, your heart will be at peace. That's the secret here. With the Lord as the center, nothing else will be at the center. No sorrow, no pain, no fear will be at the core, will be able to shake the core of who you are and what you are. That's why God occupies the center place in the heart of his children. I hope that today's lesson truly encourages you. Today was a very encouraging lesson. Read the verses that are mentioned. I didn't read any of them because I want you to really spend your time opening the Bible, going through these verses and seeing how central God is in the life of his children. May he bless you. Please comment down below. I love hearing from you. And also remember to like, to share, and to subscribe to our videos. We release one every day. And I hope to see you again here tomorrow for another Sabbath School Daily.